Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sai Kiran. Thank you so much for subscribing guys and thank you so much for supporting me since the day one I started AWS playlist and today is the day one in our Kubernetes series. So we are going to discuss why Kubernetes and then we are going to discuss about the architecture of the Kubernetes. So this entire session is a theoretical session. We are not going to do any practicals for today right and if anyone is watching this video for the very first time i request you to watch docker playlist first because in docker we have covered some important topics and then also we did some real-time activities and we have covered one container orchestration tool which is docker swarm and we have seen some disadvantages there in the docker swarm right so let's not waste the time and understand why kubernetes right till now in our previous docker session what we did guys we have created one ec2 instance right and what was the operating system we have taken we have taken ubuntu as the operating system what was the version 2401 or 22 or 18 whatever it is right so on top of the operating system we have configured one container engine right we have installed one container engine and what was the engine name docker engine Correct. On top of Docker engine, we ran some containers. Let's say this is container one, right? And this is container two. This is container one. And here is C2, which is container two, right? Let's say, for example, it Uber does have somewhere around 175 plus containers. And Swiggy does have somewhere around 75 plus containers. In my architecture, in our environment, we do have 29 containers, right? Let's forget about the Kubernetes microservices and everything because now they are following some Kubernetes strategies. Got it? Let's say we do have six containers, okay? Two were front end, two were back end, and two were database. So we are not going to keep all the six containers on single Docker host, correct? Instead, what we are going to do, we are going to spread those containers to multiple Docker hosts. Correct? For example, this is my front end. This is my back end. And this is my database. Let's say this is my database. I'll keep this up just for your understanding. Okay. And let's say this is my front end backend database so we have make sure that our six containers were running on multiple docker hosts not on the single docker host correct see if you remember our elk stack session or if you remember our prometheus session from the docker series the reason why we have configured those guys because manually as a devops engineer i cannot log into each and every container and collect the metrics right and i cannot watch and I cannot log into each and every container and see the disk space. So what we did, there is one centralized management tool. The tool is going to monitor all my container logs, disk space, CPU utilization, memory and etc. Correct. Likewise, watch here carefully. Likewise, I want a management tool. I want a management tool where it can manage my containers management tool which can manage my containers what was the name of the management tool which is container orchestration or container orchestrator right so i want one management tool where it can manage all my containers what were the container orchestration tools we do have the very famous one is kubernetes and what was the other one we have discussed that during the time of docker series which is docker swarm right we do have also multiple container orchestration tools so let's understand these two because our series is completely on kubernetes itself so what were the disadvantages we have seen in docker swarm if you remember our docker swarm session what were the disadvantages we have seen the very first thing is docker swarm doesn't have tls secrets right and docker swarm doesn't have role based access controls docker swarm doesn't have namespaces right docker swarm doesn't have stateful sets docker swarm does have 
demon sets which is called as node constraints but docker swarm doesn't have stateful sets correct and also docker swarm doesn't have readiness or liveliness probes which were called as health probes got it and also docker swarm doesn't have environmental variable secrets and we also found many disadvantages so for this reasons what organizations were doing is organizations were moving from docker swarm to kubernetes or organizations are moving from docker to kubernetes correct i hope you understand now what is the exact reason of why kubernetes now let's understand the architecture of the kubernetes if you do not understand please watch this again i'm going to take one screenshot of it I'm going to clear the entire screen now let's understand the kubernetes architecture guys before understanding the kubernetes architecture let me draw the diagram quickly for you So this is our entire Kubernetes architecture guys. We do have kube cuttle, we do have control plane and then data plane. You can also call this as master node and you can also call this as worker node 1 and then worker node 2. Got it? I'll tell you, I'll explain you right from the step by step. What is this kube cuttle or kube CTL? Kube CTL is a command line tool which is used to run commands against your Kubernetes cluster, right? You are going to communicate with your Kubernetes cluster with the help of this kube CTL itself only. If you watch here carefully, I have entered one command kube CTL create deployment hyphen hyphen name nginx hyphen hyphen image. I am taking nginx latest image hyphen hyphen replica 6, which means 6 pods. Got it? So whenever I enter this command, the very first request will be sent to the API server. API server is one of the major component in entire Kubernetes architecture where it always interacts with the external world and it always validates the request and it is also responsible for server handling requests and it is also responsible for state management and it is also responsible for authentication and authorization right so whenever you ran this command it will be first interact with interacting with the api server and what api server will do when the api server receives the request it validates it and stores all the deployment information in hcd hcd is like a database guys so it stores all the specifications in hcd itself right and we do have one more important component called scheduler. Scheduler will be always having a communication with the API server. Whenever API server receives a request, it's going to store all the specification in the HCD. And scheduler is mainly responsible to schedule the pods on multiple worker nodes. Right? Scheduler is responsible for scheduling the pods here on the different worker nodes or data plane and scheduler is very intelligent scheduler does have all the information of this worker node 1 and then worker node 2 what exactly this control manager will do let's say if the active state of this cluster changes for time being the entire worker node is down specifically under this control manager there is something called node controller and the replication controller so they will work together to ensure that all pods running on the failed node are rescheduled to the another worker node right so that will be taken care by control manager itself and in the worker node if you watch carefully each and every worker node does contains kubelet and then it also does contains kube proxy the very good speciality of this kubelet is each and every component api scheduler control manager hcd and then kube proxy all these will be running as a pods itself only but kubelet will be running as a daemon service Got it. This is the interview question, guys. They have asked me and I didn't answer. And end of the interview, I asked the panel member and they have answered this. And I also checked in the Google. Yes, that is correct. Kubelet is the only component which runs as an daemon service. Right. So what this Kubelet will do? Let's say you have six engineering spots scheduled across multiple nodes, worker node one and then worker node 
two, right? The cubelet of these nodes ensures that all these nginx containers are running correctly. If this nginx containers were fail for some instance, what this cubelet will do is cubelet will restart those containers and it also reports the status back to the control plane. Right, and there is the last component which is queue proxy. Let's say you are deploying a deployment of six pods, uh, service type as node port. If I'm mentioning service type as node port or cluster API load balancer, we are going to discuss more during the time of service explanation and practicals. Right, so if you are deploying a service type node port, so what this queue proxy will do is see ultimately these are pods, pod 1, pod 2, pod 3, 4, 5, 6, correct? Each and every pod will be having some unique IP address. That IP address will be assigned by queue proxy itself. Got it? I hope you understand guys. If you do not understand, please watch this again. Tomorrow we are going to discuss something about COPS. I'm sorry, we are not going to discuss anything. COPS is Kubernetes operations. We are going to deploy our cluster and the prerequisite for deploying the cluster is the very first one is DNS name. We want one DNS name guys. If you do have time or if you are interested to do the practicals daily, please purchase one DNS name purchase.xyz. This is cheap actually 116 rupees or something and also we need one AWS account, we need one S3 bucket and we are also going to create one IAM role and we are going to attach some policies to it. Right? And we are going to discuss this each and everything tomorrow. We are going to deploy the six node cluster. I'm going to take six node cluster and three were master and three were worker. If you do have time and if you are very new and if you wanted to learn Kubernetes, trust me, whatever I'm showing please go ahead and practice it blindly then you can able to answer each and everything this is the uh, thing which i am saying from the day one itself got it i hope you understand guys if you do have any doubts please put it in the comment section also i request you to let your friends or let's your colleagues know that we have started the kubernetes series thank you so much for watching everyone we'll see you in the tomorrow session have a nice day everyone bye bye